Your Olympic hero has arrived. It's true. It's true. You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of Overanalyzing, the series where I take a more in-depth at the fictional universes which I love. So around five years ago, I did a video about the South Park unaired pilot. It was part of my Movies You Probably Never Fucking Heard Of series, and it was not a very good video. It was not very popular either, because the thumbnail looked like this, but the video looked like this. Fugitive Red Eye, and this is another bonus episode of Movies You Probably Never Fucking Heard Of. Er was Cartman gets an anal probe, but it's a different version of it. Many people in the comments criticized it and told me that I was clickbaity and all this other stuff, and that I was misleading. But that was never my intention. The problem was I was doing limit. I was using limited technology at the time. I was using Upload Studio to make videos, which is very, very limited and not very good. Today I thought I'd redo that because I have much better technology, editing software, etc. And on top of that. I also wanted to talk about the other two South Park pilots, quote-unquote, the two shorts, the two Spirit of Christmases. Now, a lot of people know about the second Spirit of Christmas because it was actually featured in an episode of the show, specifically A Very Crappy Christmas. But the first short is Jesus vs. Frosty, which is how they're differentiated. The first Spirit of Christmas is called Jesus vs. Frosty. The second is typically referred to as Jesus vs. Santa. If you want to get technical, they're both simply titled The Spirit of Christmas. Both of them are actually featured in some of the early South Park intros, and, uh, Jesus vs. Frosty appears on a little TV, and Jesus vs. Santa appears on a drive through theater screen. So let's start with Jesus vs. Frosty. It's a very early prototype that Matt and Trey made while they were in college. The boys themselves are not quite the boys we would know today. They didn't fully take shape until the following short, the Jesus vs. Santa one, but we'll get to that in a minute. In Jesus vs. Frosty, there were characters that appeared to look like Cartman and Kenny to a degree, and one that kind of looked like Stan and one that could maybe be Kyle. Uh, the Kenny character is unnamed. However, the Cartman character is named Kenny. Cartman's name was originally Kenny. Here, listen to this. <laughs> Another thing you'll notice is that the language is completely and totally uncensored in this short. And Jesus, we beseech thee in this time of need. Okay, and fucking Frosty, he uh, fucking killed dude, my friend. Dude, this is Jesus. You don't just fuck in front of Jesus. And even though the Kenny character wasn't named, he does still die in this. So Kenny died as well as Cartman died, although Cartman's name was Kenny in this. You'll also notice that Jesus was a little weird baby man hybrid in this because they found him in the manger. So the South Park Jesus character had not fully taken effect yet either. But yeah, it's a fun little short, but it's not as talked about as the following short, because the following short did establish the characters as they are now. And let's move on to that. The Spirit of Christmas, the second one, from 1995. The original was from 1992, I didn't mention that before, so I probably should have. Uh, but the 1995 Spirit of Christmas, also commonly referred to as Jesus vs. Santa, this one was made because Matt and Trey had gone around showing their original Sp Jesus vs. Frosty to a few friends and people like that, and one of them was like, hey, you should make a... You should make a, another short uh, so I can use as, like, a digital Christmas card. I'm like, they're like, okay, sure, and so they made the second one. Except this time, the boys had more taken form. In addition to that, Jesus actually looks like Jesus from South Park. This episode would actually be featured in the episode of Very Crappy Christmas, as I mentioned before, as the boys make it for a film festival for Christmas. It was also secretly included on Tiger Woods' 99 PGA Tour on PS1. It could only be accessed if you put the disc in a computer and went to the game files, but you could watch The Spirit of Christmas that way, which had to have the game recalled, because it was an E-rated game. As with the last time, as you'll hear, the language was completely uncensored. Yeah, Hanukkah sucks. Don't you oppress me, fat boy! Don't call me fat, motherfucker! Then don't belittle my people, you fucking fat ass! Ah, damn it! Don't call me fat, you motherfucking son of a bitch! In addition to that, we did once again get a Kenny death. Uh, however, as you'll notice, in neither of these is the phrase you bastard said, but they both said, Either they killed Kenny or Frosty killed Kenny. So both of them were prototypes to the phrase, Oh my god, they killed Kenny, you bastard. Oh my god, they killed Kenny! This one also featured Brian Boitano in... And the phrase, What would Brian Boitano do? Now we've got to think here. Now let's see. What would Brian Boitano do? Yeah, what would Brian Boitano do? Someone say my name. I'm Montano. What incredible irony! 
which would later be featured in the movie. Neither of these two shorts were particularly story-driven, they were just about Jesus fighting either Frosty or Santa, and talking about what the spirit of Christmas is. The conclusion on both, of course, being presents. And the second one ending with them celebrating Hanukkah because you get eight nights of presents. If you're Jewish, you get presents for eight days! Wow, really? Count me in! Yeah, I'll be a Jew too! So those are the first two shorts. The second one is definitely the most well-known of the two, and the first one is not as well-known. But there was a third South Park prototype, the unaired version of Cartman Gets an Anal Probe. Believe it or not, this version had about 10 minutes of footage that wasn't in the final cut, and then there was about 5 minutes of new footage they made for the TV version to make it make more sense narratively. The plot is very similar, but there are quite a few things that are different. For instance, Pip was introduced in the episode, he goes to the nurf nurse's office where Nurse McSchwartz is introduced. Nurse, nurse McSchwartz was a prototype for Nurse Gollum. And of course, there's the scene at the lunch line where Pip is like, Lunchy munchies, mm? which was actually later reused in An Elephant Makes Love to a Pig. Also in this version, Cartman has to go to the nurse's office as well. In addition to that, Cartman farting fire has nothing to do with the anal probe but rather has to do with the tamales that Chef gives him, and he has to eat them all because the bullies force him to eat them all instead of the boys eating each one. Uh, and the reason Chef gave them them was to raise their temperatures so they could get out of school by having a quote-unquote fever. All of the female voice actors were done by someone different than Mary Kay Bergman as well, so the voices are quite different. Not to mention it had a completely different soundtrack, very Charlie Brown sounding. The whole subplot about the aliens thinking the cows are the dominant species on Earth and communicating them with a cow translator does not happen in this. Instead, they were actually just straight up killing the cows just for the hell of it. In addition to that, we never actually see the probe come out of Cartman in this version. The little thing with the eyeball and the arms does not exist in this version. Not to mention, Cartman actually was shown to have a dad and a sister in this version, which is completely ridiculous given the way that Cartman's dynamic worked later on. Kenny actually returns at the end of this episode after he has already died, uh, and they just say, hey, Kenny, you're looking well. So yeah, it was, a, it was very similar because it was still mostly the same episode, but it was also quite different. It also had a slightly different intro, which was really slow and creepy. Cartman also doesn't get pink eye at the end, he's just returned. But yeah, those are the South Park prototypes. The first two were just shorts that were released first in college and then as a digital Christmas card that went viral. And the third was the unaired version of Cartman Gets an Anal Probe that the reason it got changed was for time constraints because the original version was 28 minutes long, which didn't leave enough time for commercial breaks. So they had to cut it down to 24 minutes. So they cut out 10 minutes and then added in about five minutes of new footage to make it more narratively make sense. Out of the two versions of Cartman Gets an Anal Probe, it's actually very difficult to say which is the better version, because I like a lot of things about both versions. I would say, ultimately, I think I prefer the TV version, because, uh, you know, the, it has a lot of iconic scenes, you know, like, I like to sing uh, about the moon and the tune and the spring, uh, which doesn't happen in the original. Um, and it also has, you know, the, the aliens mooing at the cows, which also doesn't happen in the original. But I do like the part at the end where Officer Barbrady asks the boys if they've seen anyone suspicious, and then they show the aliens with the mutilated cow, which didn't make it into the TV version. Although you can briefly see it in some of the intros to South Park. You know the aliens were originally supposed to be, like, a major part of the series and were supposed to be in every episode, right? Like, granted, they got pushed into the background of quite a few episodes, but originally the show was going to have a heavy focus on aliens, and Trey and Matt really wanted to do that, but then they saw the X-Files, and they're like, oh, the X-Files are doing that, and that's lame. So then they didn't. The unaired version of Cartman Gets an Anal Probe was released on a special version of the Season 2 set at Best Buy. Um, that's how I got a copy of it as well. Um, it's a little bonus disc that comes in a little paper sleeve. And unfortunately, that set is out of print, and you can no longer get it. Again, it was a Best Buy exclusive version of Season 2. It had no indication on the outside that it was special. It was like a, like, kind of like a golden ticket sort of thing where you just randomly get it. Um, and you had to open it up and then pull out the little sleeve. Um, granted... I got it later on on eBay, but it's kind of like the Professor Chaos Code, which might be something I talk about later on. I briefly mentioned it before, so I might not. But if it's worth a video and people want it, I'll do a video talking about the Professor Chaos Code. Uh, but anyway, this has been Fugitive Red Eye. Have a good one. And now he's gonna kill everybody! Did he look kind of like this? They're supposed to build a better world. Don't you want to be a part of it?